Welcome back everybody. Today I have a tutorial on this epic winged makeup. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow placements. I actually wore it on Saturday night and I was feeling myself. I am super stoked to be working with Marc Jacobs in this video. It's like a dream collab for me. One of my all time favorite makeup brands. So yay, I hope you enjoy. Oh, hi, hi you guys. We're gonna start with the eyes today, like I always do with big eye looks. We're gonna prime uh, the eyelid from the lash line all the way to the brow bone. You know the drill. To create my eye look today, we're gonna be using the newly launched Marc Jacobs Omega Gel Powder Eyeshadows. These come in a, in a wardrobe of essential neutral shades, those shades that we all love and use. We've got a variety of finishes too, your mattes, uh, shimmers, satins, and they're designed to be super pigmented, super blendable. You might also notice that the pan size is extra large. There's a lot of product going on in there. So let's take the big O, which is a matte light brown on a big fluffy brush here. We're gonna start contouring the socket. This step is often described as the transition, but I also tend to think of it as kind of like the perimeter of my eye look. This is the color that's going to peek out of the edges of the final eye makeup. So we really want it to be blown out and hazy and no hard edges, essentially. <laughs> Onto a slightly deeper matte brown, and we're gonna focus on the outer third of the eye. So really beginning to develop that elongated winged shape. And once the brush has less product on it, then you can extend through the rest of the socket to ensure seamlessness. These mattes are ridiculously silky. You go to your local Sephora, go to your Marc Jacobs counter and rub your finger into the pan. It is an experience. In the words of every beauty guru before me, they're very buttery. So as we move to the deeper shades, you also know that you'll notice that the brush selection starts to get smaller and smaller. Uh, and that allows us some accuracy in our eyeshadow placement. If sometimes if you find that your eyeshadow looks tend to become like one big undefined haze, it could be that your brushes are a touch too big. Let's add some shimmer to this eye. We're sweeping OMG onto the inner half of the lid. Now these sorts of coppery shades are especially beautiful if you have like blue eyes or green eyes, but even if you have brown eyes like me, I think it really brings out any ambery tones. We're gonna to come back to the eyes in just a sec, but uh, I will show you what I did for the rest of the complexion because I know you guys leave in the comments that you like to see the entire look come together. So update on the Armani Cushion Foundation. A few of you have asked about this. I do really love it. It is not as shiny <laughs> as the YSL Fusion Ink Cushion that I've been raving on forever and ever. That one is like downright glossy. The Armani is more of a satiny kind of finish which is nice. I don't have to be a disco ball all of the time, right? Tom Ford Under Eye Concealer. This is uh, very high coverage and very matte. I was kind of surprised. They're not playing around with this one. It's up there with your Tarte Shape Tapes and your Uber Glam kind of concealers. Quick powder with the good old classic uh, Laura Mercier Translucent. Gonna mute some of that shine so that you can't accurately identify my lighting setup in the reflection on my forehead. All right, now let's finish off the eyes. This is the fun bit. I'll be using the Marc Jacobs Highliner Glam Glitter Eyeliner. So I adore the original matte highliners and the shimmery highliners, and now these new glitter highliners are equally awesome. I'd say that you have well, maybe like a 20 second window to smudge them if you want, but then they set absolutely bulletproof. Again, I wore this makeup for over 12 hours. That eyeliner did not budge. I promise I will use that incredible turquoise in a future video, but today I'll be using the shade Glitterbug, uh, which is a dense, rich brown with a sort of silvered reflect throughout. And we're gonna create a wedge shape on the lower lash line. So we're bringing that outer corner further down than you would normally. And as a guide, if you were to look straight ahead, that line should look just about horizontal. Start uh, blending the edges and you can also connect that eyeliner to the upper lash line. You can drag outwards a bit if you feel like a little bit of a wing or you can leave it rounded uh, if that suits your eye shape better. You know, just follow your heart. I'm also gonna diffuse the edges uh, of that liner with a brown shadow. Now don't hold back here. The focus of this look is that heavy lower lash line. If you have a hooded eye shape or a heavy eyelid like me, or maybe you just have an eye shape with a smaller lid space, this placement is going to be ideal for you because all of that drama extends from the lower lash line, which is always visible 
when the eyes are open. Sometimes I keep the eyeliner blunt on the outer edge or rounded, but in this instance, I decided to wing it out. And I do that by just reapplying a little bit more eyeliner and then sweeping out with a brush. Uh, AKA Karima's easiest wing liner technique. OG subscribers will remember that. These liners are perfect for smudging into a wing. I'm having a moment with individual lashes again. I tried to wear a strip lash the other night and it poked me in the eye all night long. I just about ripped it off in the back of an Uber. I also like with individuals, you can kind of customize your own shape. So in this look, I stacked a whole heap of medium individuals on the outer half of the eye. We want a lot of weightiness and bushiness there to balance that heavy lower lash line. And then once I reach the iris, you stop and you have a dance break. And then you can switch to your small individuals for the inner half of the eye. So nine times out of 10, when you see me and I'm wearing individual lashes, that's the distribution that I'm wearing. While those lashes are drying, I'm just gonna quickly whiz through my brows. <laughs> Not much has changed on this front. I'm just always going for that natural fluffy vibe. It takes me maybe two minutes. Um, occasionally, one of you guys will DM me on Instagram just to tell me that you like my brows. And I just wanna say that that is actually the best thing ever to me. It makes my day, my week, my year, my life. Hashtag blessed. Quick slick of mascara. This Sicily mascara is so expensive, it should be criminal. And I can't lie, I adore it. I absolutely adore it. I will repurchase, I have repurchased, and I regret nothing. When I look at this palette, this blush nude palette, I think to myself, I want this color combo on my face, I want it in my decor, I want it in my wardrobe, I want this to be my Instagram theme. But I cannot, for the life of me, create any sort of consistent Insta feed. What I'm trying to say here is that this is such a beautiful face palette. You know, I swish my brush across that bronze tone bar and then dust it a little bit around the hairline and on the cheekbones. And then you can dip a little bit into that soft pink bar and then blend onto the apples of the cheeks for a blush. If this all starts to sound too complicated, you can just swish your brush in all of the colors together and you are still a blush toned goddess. You guys know Gilbert Solis, right? He's the global makeup artist at Marc Jacobs. I've met him quite a few times, he's lovely. Anyway, I saw him use the shade Primo to highlight the face. I saw it in some YouTube videos, so I'm gonna do that too. This is the very definition of a blinding highlight. It's like zero to 100 in two seconds flat. Champagne, shiny cheekbones. Yes, please. If you enjoy a bold eye, bold lip combo, you can wear this with a coral. You could uh, pair this look with a warm red but I'm basic and my lips are perm appealing. So I'm gonna go for a nude glossy kind of vibe. My favorite nude combo right now is the Too Faced Nude Lip Liner and just a little pat pat of the Bite Beauty French Press Lip Gloss in the shade uh, Salted Caramel. And that is it. I really hope that you guys love this look as much as I do. If you did enjoy this video, then do subscribe. Studies suggest that my YouTube subscribers are amongst the loveliest of communities on the internet. I mean, go have a look at any one of my comment sections. Everyone is like super insightful and positive and helpful. And I feel so super fortunate um, for all of you. So thank you all. Come say hello to me on Instagram at Karima McKimmy if you want to see a little more of my face. I hope you are having a wonderful day, whatever it is that you're up to. And I shall speak to you all very soon. Bye.